Hi everyone, David Mailer here, and today this is part two of this amazing affinity analysis series. This is really cool because it's going to show you exactly what people buy in conjunction with other products in their basket of grocery shoppers, you know, uh, mall shoppers, whatever it is, what they buy together in uh, measurable uh, affinity. So what that means is how items they buy together often. Okay, which gives you a much deeper reading into their insights and who they really are. This is a much deeper insight into who these customers really are and their customer behavior. Um, and that give you a lot of really cool stuff. So let me show you this. So this graph right here, you can see on the right. Let me put this little pointer thing on here. And uh, this thing right here, this shows you ranked from the top to the bottom of the most likely or highest affinity products that they buy together. And so sometimes they buy things like there's these two items they buy together. This is milk and avocados. They could buy other things. And here's one that's got three. So there's different things. These all have to have a certain amount of lift to show here. So um, these are all items here you would want to look into to see who they really are, why they buy these things, and what makes them different. And maybe you need to market to them differently. So let's open this up and show you what we're doing here. Okay, so what I've started with here, if you haven't seen the first video, please go back and watch it because it shows you how we pull in the data and some of the initial insights we get. Now we're going to go into some more hardcore stuff. We're going to do the a priori algorithm and uh, we're going to determine support. And uh, so right now I'm going to assign support 0.1 to this. Okay, and I'm going to show you how all this works in a minute here. So first what we're going to do is we're going to use the a priori algorithm, which is this guy right here. And we're going to run this line of code, right? Where basically what it says is transactions, parameter, list, target, uh, of frequency item sets. Support is the support, obviously, uh, which is what we put in here. And the minimum length and uh, the control list verbose equals false. Okay, so that's what you're going to use right here, this guy. I'm going to put that in the item sets. Then what we're going to do is use a particular uh, screen uh, size to be able to better show this. So we're using is 518.22 and plus dot one. That makes it so that when I bring this out, it shows it correctly. If I don't do that, it'll kind of move it one way or the wrong way. We can try different things if you want, um, but you'll be surprised it usually doesn't work correctly. Let's just try that and just see, just so I can show you real quick. So if I, nope, that's not the right one. I want to show right here, this guy. So if I take this and set it back to one, right, it puts an invalid graphic state. That's why. So then when we do this, let's do this. Eh. It still shows, but I think it's holding on to the old uh, graph. Regardless, what I want you to really pay attention to here is the code on the left. Okay, so you got the a priori algorithm, right? This guy right here, transactions, parameter equals list, target equals frequent item sets, right? Which we did above. And um, support, minimum length equals two, control, and all this that's going to show that's going to go into our item sets, right? So then what we're doing is we're using this to split the screen correctly. And then we're doing order support uh, the, the sets. So data frame, or we're putting it to a data frame of sort item sets by support. And it's not by decreasing. So decreasing equals F. Okay. And so we have that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create a bar plot based off of the sets order support, which is this, right? And the support, right? Under that, we want support, based on support, set order items, okay? And then the uh, limit, so this 0.35, this is something you have to play with to figure out what fits best. So you'll see if you used a one for this instead of 0.35, let's do that and I'll show you what happens here. If I use a one, and I just take this and do the same thing right here. Let's bring that out. It doesn't work because it's got invalid graphic state. So let's do this again. Let's take that from there to there. There it goes. 
and well the problem is see that's the reason why I had 0.35 okay so if you use a one what it does it makes these much smaller you can use it if you want but nothing is in the range of one they're all about 0.4 and below so let's take this and take that one take that back to a 0.4 Let's see what that does. I had 0.35. It's not going to make a huge difference. Let's just try that. And bring that out so that we can see it. There we go. See how it makes it better? It's actually like a 0.32 is our top value. It doesn't matter. You can use 0.35. You can use 0.4. What you want to do is you want to be able to show your graph as well as you can. you got to play with that a little bit to see how it fits. But you can see here clearly this is our top combination that people buy avocados and milk they could be many there's many other things here but this gives it the top about 15 or so of the uh, affinity items okay if you want to limit it to two uh, you can do that right here and then you would just have these guys this guy's like rated right about two you'd have these three right here those are your top three um, now what we're going to do down below here so that gives you the code to do that Maybe we should open this up so you can see it all here uh, let's do this. Let's hit enter here. <clears throat> so you've got that one. And let's bring this one here. Let's bring that one down. So the indented here shows you this goes. That's that whole thing right here. So you see it better. That's item sets. And this one here is the actual bar plot that you saw there. And uh, this goes with it. That's the text for support. Alright, now where did our screen go? Hold on here. Okay, where were we? There we are. Okay, so next we've got part B. Um, now before this, I just want to tell you that if you do want to remove some items or you want to filter it by that, then you would use this right here. Um, which is right here, this guy right here. So I could say the product baskets, the transactions, I could say uh, if I want basket size is greater than one, for instance, right? Because obviously if the basket size is a one item, there's no affinity item, right? It's by itself. So you could do that if you wanted to. In this case, it doesn't matter because if you looked at that list, everything there had at least two items in it or three. Sometimes you'll even see four or five, depending on the customer's, the products, the type of, the, the niche, all those things, okay? So next, you've seen the top, like, 15 or so items, right? Now what we want to do is we're going to use the, al the a priori algorithm to determine the rules, right? The rules are going to be how many affinity items or item sets do we have, and then what is the lift, what is the support, what is the count, all those things of it. And then we can write it to a CSV file. Okay, so what I'm going to show you here is, start here, we take the transactions of the basket sizes, right? Put it in product baskets. Then what we do is we look at this, right? So this is uh, 10,000 divided by the dimension of the product baskets and the first item in there. So what we want to do is we want to run this, and I'll show you right here. See how that's 1.04? What that means if the, if that number is greater than one use the support that you used above which is right here 0 0.1 right usually your sports going to be 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 somewhere in that range that's why right above this I have support uh, of 0 0.1 and support of 0 0.05 that's what you'll use up there so whatever I used up here which is this 0 0.1 right here I'm going to use right here in this next line so this next line what we're doing is we're saying rules right and we're setting a priori, which is the algorithm, of product baskets, right, parameter, um, list of support equals 0 0.1, confidence of 0 0.01, and max length of 3, right, for both equals false. So we're going to put that in there. So let's do that. And then let's plot the rules, right? So if we do that, well, first we're going to bring this back, right, so you can see what we're looking at. And there are errors because it's invalid because it's too small. Let's do it again. All right, hold on here. Uh, we're having a problem with this thing. Okay, let's clear this out and go up here and probably clear out our plots. Run 
that and then come back down here where we just were right here run that, that and that there we go okay apparently it thought it just had too much too many plots probably stored in its memory either that or it had the wrong sizing so I just had to reset it to a plot of one over here which is what that uh, right here this line this par m fro c one comma one does okay so down here and that's the thing with data science sometimes you're gonna have to play with things a little bit to tweak them and make them work for yourself your data okay like we just did um, and sometimes little things like that can happen you just hit this button right here to clear out the graphs if there's too many graphs already in there what this does right here we plotted the rules shows us they have a nice pattern to them of confidence versus support okay and most importantly, let's look at the rules, right? If I just take rules, because we put that in there, and we just hit Control and Enter here, we that shows me now I have 3,303 3 rules, okay? And what that means is those are line items, right, of affinity sets, okay? So if we go down here, I can now inspect that, the rules, right? Inspect, sort rules by lift, for let's say the first 300 I could pick anything here I get 500 I've got 3,303 rules so I can pick any number I want for this from 300 on up to 3303 or less I could pick the top 10 you know as I did earlier but I could pick any of those I want and so by running this what that does inspects it right and that lists them right there so if I bring this up let's do this let's bring this over and let's run it again so we can see it all there. There we go. Now let's go up to the top. And what this does actually shows what the a priori algorithm does. So it gives you the left hand side, the right hand side, right? So what did they buy in conjunction together? They buy these two items with this, these two items with this, this with this, and so on and so forth by UPC numbers. This is the support. This is the confidence, and the most important number is not support or confidence, is lift, right? Because it takes everything into account, and then your count, right? So the higher the lift, the more likely it is to occur, and, uh, and then there's the count of how many times that happens, okay? Now, this is not always going to be an order of count. It's going to be an order of highest lift to lowest lift. See that? So if I go down this, this the count will defer, or be different but see how the the lift keeps going down okay so from this I have my most likely items and my least likely items right that are occurring together all right so now I can take this that I have here right and I put it in HF data one HFD data one I'm sorry and uh, it could be anything it could be uh, let's just say this is uh, gross so let's say grocery data one so you could put it in that right and uh, so then we can take the top 300 here like this so let's do this let's put it in there and now we have to have this correct grocery data one right and so what this does right here is we have a new data frame which has what the grocery data in it which is this and then we can write that with write.csv grocery data and then just put the file name where you want it to go and that's it so what this does it puts this file right into a uh, csv file so that later on let's go to the top of it you can go and report on this you can go and take that and say okay here's our top 10 item affinities um, here's the support, here's the confidence, here's the lift, and here's the count. And then from this, you could actually go and bring in your, uh, in Excel, you could bring in and do a VLOOKUP with your uh, UPC descriptions so that it becomes more meaningful instead of looking at this and saying, oh, is that milk, is that yogurt, is that coupons, cookies, I have no idea, it's just 4072 and 4687 or whatever it is. All right, so you can do all that real easy and, um, Basically, what you've done here is you've created an affinity analysis, and let's go up here, a complete affinity analysis, and let's do this. Let's bring back that bar plot so you can see the end piece here, and 
and let's bring it back here because this is a little bit more meaningful probably than the rest there. Okay. And that shows you based on, you know, your support exactly, you know, which ones are more likely to happen and see how it's kind of cutting it off here. That's why we switched to this instead of the support one. So let's do this and bring that back. And there you go. See how now you can clearly see it. Okay. That would have cut off some of this. You wouldn't know that was three items in that one. And that's how that works. And it shows you something that now you can take back to your department and say, look, we have a subset of customers. They, they do have affinity purchases. These are the affinity purchases. And you can do some cool reporting and other stuff based off that. But this is basically a complete run through of how to do affinity analysis on any customer data. Um, using the a priori algorithm. This is a data science project I use all the time uh, for, uh, you know, different uh, departments, groups, etc., marketing, category, stuff like that. I hope you found this interesting and informational. And uh, thanks again for watching. If you haven't yet, please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. And also, be, you know, feel free to leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Tell me what you like to see, what you want to see. Uh, more visuals, other things, other processes, whatever. Uh, or just let me know. Drop me a line and if you have a question or uh, anything. Thanks again and have a great day.